And just by like having horses and being a farmer's daughter, I achieve the lowest exercise ring every day, but I don't want to set it higher because then I'll be disappointed. <laughs> Mine's at like 30 minutes, I think. Is that right? Yeah, that's what mine's set for. Yeah, so I'm at 28. Anyway, apparently we're now live. Okay, I'll stop yawning. Maybe. <laughs> I think. Meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Yes, there we are. Yay. Let me close it on my phone, though, because that's just annoying. So, um, okay, Catherine, welcome again. We seem to talk a lot on Zoom. One of these days, <laughs> I'll actually, uh, I'll yeah. actually come back to Cornwall. Not when the visitors, all the visitors are there, though. Yeah. So, um, welcome, everybody. Um, new kind of feature once a week, Marketing Made Simple. Um, and today we're going to talk with fellow, she means business um, trainer, um, all round social media superstar, Catherine <laughs> George from Oh So Social. So we're going to talk about um, Facebook marketing. Welcome, Catherine. Uh, Hi, thank you for having me. That's all right. Thank you for coming on. So I thought, like I said to you, I think what we might talk about, um, maybe you can do a bit of an introduction in a minute of yourself, but um, talk about, I don't know about you, but I often get people say to me, either Facebook marketing doesn't work, no one sees my posts, no one, you know, I can't get, you know, to my audience, or they say that they're wasting lots of money on ads and, and things like that. And there seems to be two extremes. It doesn't yeah. seem to be any kind of like ha balance in the middle. So I thought, yeah. let's just talk about a few myths and a few um, sort of must do's, if you like, on Facebook marketing. So do you want to just sort of tell everybody who you are and um, yeah, where you yeah. are in the country and, uh, yeah. and then we can kick off. Sounds good. Uh, so hi everyone, my name is Catherine George. I'm the founder of Oso Social. We are international multi-award winning social media marketing experts. Try saying that after you've had a few. Uh, so I am one of the, the Shimi's business mentors. I'm also a Facebook blueprint lead trainer. Uh, so we are down in the usually very sunny Cornwall, although it's raining today. It's just started raining, I'm afraid. Um, but that's where we are in the world. Brilliant. Um, so yeah. So you're international now, you said. Yeah, so we, we've been international for quite a few years, actually. Oh. So at the moment, we've got clients in France, Hong Kong, Australia and America. Um, so we used to look after a Caribbean island, which was wonderful until there was a devastating storm. Oh, no. And then it, it wasn't so wonderful anymore. Yeah, um, yeah but we do a lot of uh, management and consultancy kind of across the globe. Um, quite simply because we we can, you know, it's what we do. We've got clients who are based in the UK but trade internationally. We've done a lot of international products, a, little, a lot of international product launches. Um, and it works, you know, that's the kind of beauty of, of social and there's good offer, there's a good internet connection in the office. So we can literally work work everywhere. And we we do it ourselves, like we encourage our staff to. So I'll like bounce off to Marrakesh for a bit or Spain or you nice. know, we'll or we pre-COVID we always to just bounce around the world and just kind of pick up clients when you're there as well. So so yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Well yeah, I know you're always sort of like uh, out on the water or doing something like that, aren't you? So um so we're both coastal coastal dwellers, which is good. But yeah, so let's let's talk about Facebook and some, as I said, some some sort of myths, if you like. So I I can't actually haven't looked up the, the stats, recent stats this morning of Facebook usage or the amount of adults in the world that or people in the world that have a Facebook profile and are users of Facebook. But it's in the billions, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and so when people say to me, Facebook marketing doesn't work, I'm always, oh, here comes my dog. He's come to join. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm always astonished when people say Facebook doesn't, Facebook marketing doesn't work. And so I'm always kind of like, well, what do you mean it doesn't work? Um, yeah. And do you have that? Do people say that to you or? Yeah, so so the big thing is I hear a lot is going, oh, organic social is dead, to which my reply is it's not dead, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. And it's the, the big thing across the board is social isn't a magic wand and it's not called sales media, it's called social media. 
<laughs> so it's not about hard, fast sales. It's about building a connection. It's about building a relationship. It's about building, you know, that kind of growth. And it is. It's it's the same as I always compare the sales funnel to, to dating. You don't ask someone to marry you on the first date. So why are you expecting people to buy from you and become a loyal customer when they've never heard from you before? Yeah, I, I, I use that analogy all the time. Or I say, you know, we've been out for coffee and now you're asking me to marry you. I mean, it, it is ridiculous because you just get that push, don't you, all the time of buy, buy, buy. And as soon as you've... And, and it doesn't just happen on Facebook. It happens a lot on, on other... Uh, social profiles, um, uh, uh, platforms, LinkedIn being a really obvious one that it that it happens on. Yeah. Um, and I think you're right. I think it's just that people think that they can just broadcast out what they want to talk about, but they don't make it about their client or what's in it for me. So if I'm looking yeah. at your your Facebook page and your post that you're putting up, what's in it for me? Why am I going to spend my time looking at this post? looking at this video even watching this live what what am I going to get yeah. out of it well hopefully you're going to get out some tips of how you're doing organic social media wrong so yeah. what, what would be sort of like top three things that you think a people are doing wrong or b they need to be doing um in order to get the most out of Facebook marketing so I think it's a big thing that people need to be really aware that actually you come to Facebook for your daily connection you come there to feel connected not sold to yeah. And a lot with people's content, it's all about me, me, me. Actually, we don't care what's in it for you. We want to feel better as customers. So actually, we need to kind of see that the value for us, the benefits for us, the value add for us. Like, why are we going to buy this product? You know, why are we going to use your services? And not, you know, oh, because of this X, Y, and Z. It's what are you really selling? So we're a social media agency. We don't sell social media. We sell stress and time management. Yeah. Social media is scary. It's confusing. You, you're a busy business owner. You don't have the time to understand it. So you come to us. It's exactly the same. You know, why would I buy? So I've just signed up to um, FS, FFS Razors. Me too. This week. Yeah. <laughs> so they're great. Um, but I mean, that was months and months of them targeting me with advertising, telling me that they were going to make my life easier. Yeah. They weren't yeah. selling roses. They were selling time management. Yeah. You know, they're like, you, we know that you're busy. That's what they came to me with. You're a busy person. We know that you're now in lockdown. So try this. You know, they gave me reasons. They weren't selling roses. They were selling time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And as well, they were the, the obvious message of, why shouldn't we get cheap razors as well? Sorry, very feminine example here, but it's like the, the Dollar Shave Club for guys. Well, we've yeah. done this for girls. Yeah, You know, we're here talking to you. And actually, the very best examples of social campaigns that work really well are those that bring value back. So it's like I use Dave, the TV channel, as a phenomenal example. Their, their mission statement is to be the home of witty banter. So all their social media is is witty banter constantly. They yeah. are value adding to my life. Yeah. And then when they run a tea, an advert, which is normally, guys, we told our boss that we'd written this really fancy advert. Instead, we spent the money on Chinese. So can you just like this post and maybe tune in later? I'm already engaged with them because they've been adding to my life. And I'm probably going to watch the show because I feel like I'm friends with the marketing team. Yeah, the other one that I really like that does an excellent job and did an excellent job all through lockdown was Innocent Smoothies. Um, yeah. I mean, they were doing like joke of the day, um, dog of the day, all sorts of different stuff. And they were great long posts that you had to, yeah. it, you know, give over yeah. a fair amount of time to reading. But they were entertaining and they yeah. made me think more favorably about innocent as yeah. an adult. Um, so I think you're right. I think it's about putting across personality, about yeah. not just being kind of like bland and sort of like, this is who we are and you should buy this. It's about why, why should I even take time to read what you're read or watch? What are you adding? Is it just humor? Is it entertainment? Is it, you know, is it problem solving? Are you doing something for me? And if you are, I might continue to look at your stuff and I yeah. might eventually buy from you. I bought those. I've also subscribed to those razors this week. But I can't yeah. get over the fact that in my Gmail account, the, the account is from FFS. 
And yeah. I, it just the abbreviation is just like, why is someone sending me like something that says for sake? Yeah. And then I'm like, they've done that on purpose. I'm sure they have. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't yeah. wait to receive mine. Have you got yours yet? Yeah, yeah. I've been subscribed for like four months now. Ooh. And is it good? Really, yeah, really good. Excellent. Really good. So, so I am. Um, so you think that, so from a Facebook marketing perspective, it's about value add, whether that be entertainment, whether that be problem solving or something, you've got to think of it like that. Yeah. And you've got to think about building that connection and that relationship and being aware of your sales funnel length. And it's something I say to everyone is like, well, how long is your sales funnel? And they go, well, people just buy straight away. I'm like, no, 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 they don't. And you should know and you should spend time going back to your website data. There's great tools like HubSpot does it. Um, we, we have one client who is a wedding client. So I know it's a really obvious example. But we can tell from the day they like their Facebook page how many times they'll visit the website and how many social media posts they'll engage with before they request a quote. Wow. So it's really important to know that sales funnel length because then you can set yourself some realistic goals and some realistic examples. There's no point saying, oh, Facebook marketing doesn't work for me. Well, actually, you might have a year long sales funnel, in which case, no, it's not going to work for a year. There are businesses out there like that. Yeah. And you have to be aware as well what people are buying and what's going to put them over the edge and how you can best get over that kind of value add. Actually, is a Facebook page pointless for you? Do you need to be talking to them in a Facebook group? Who are they really buying? What are they really buying? So, so I've got a second business, which is all online training. Like, hands up, I thought it would be easier than it was. It's taken me a long time to kind of figure out. Yeah. But we know that we have a three-year sales funnel on it. And we know that people have to fully invest in me first. So we, we have a YouTube channel, we have a Facebook group, and we spend hours providing free content so people will eventually buy into me and then be prepared to kind of go for that next step. Yeah, I think that's such an important point that people just think there's like a magic bullet. And yeah. also they there is this perception that if you're doing facebook or social media yeah. posting that is your marketing plan yeah that, that is, so when you say to people well what well what else are you doing or yeah where does that sit in your marketing plan yeah they look at you a bit blankly and say well yeah. what do you mean that that is my marketing yeah. plan it's like no it's an element of your plan it's a tactic yeah. to reach your audience that's no different from you know days gone by a magazine ad or something like that yeah. and I think that everyone thinks that just because it's like on our phones and in our you know in our life constantly that you can just bypass all other elements of the strategy because you're doing a Facebook post yeah and the thing is as well so many people then go well, well we're on social it's like great so what's your marketing plan what's your goals and they're like we don't have any like if you don't have those business goals those marketing goals how do you know what content you're going to share? And that's how we end up with so much content, which is like, well, I keep sharing pictures of my dog. Why? What, what is that going to bring you back? It's like, well, we, we're just doing stuff because we've got to do something. You are better off doing less good quality content than you yeah. are doing loads of crap. Yeah. Like, and the big thing as well is like, don't be afraid to tell people what you do. Like it's a yes. big thing. People are like, oh well, I don't, I don't want everyone to know that I'm, I'm talking about this every day. The same people don't see it every day. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't tell them, how do they know? Yeah. Funnily enough, when I do like reintroduction posts, either on my Facebook page or on my Instagram profile, and I try to do them once a week, um, they always get the most engagement, actually, yeah. because. You forget that A, not everybody sees that content all the time, like you say, and B, you have new people looking at your content all the time. You shouldn't make the assumption that everybody knows everything about you. They may have yeah. just come new to you. Um, and I think that's, that's a really important point. So, you know, yeah, make sure that you're reintroducing all the time. I say to clients all the time, just because you're, if you're bored of posting something, then that's a good thing because it means that you're posting it irregular enough times that you're aware of it, but your clients won't be. They won't yeah. see all the posts. They won't, you know, they won't. And they, it doesn't matter 
I mean, Coca-Cola say the same thing over and over and over and over again, right? You have yeah. to. It's about that repetition and it's about that, um, that, that sort of like building that, like you say, no like and trust factor. And I think people really back off from that on social media for some reason. I'm not yeah. sure why. I, I think it's because as well, people think that they've got all these page likes that are, well, they see it every day. It's like, no, they don't. Yeah. Not, not at any point, even if you have a piece of content go viral, not, not all of your page likes will see it because it's not relevant to all of your page likes. Yeah. People underestimate how clever the, the master algorithm is and how biased it is. So, and it's, it's proven the quickest way to sell more of something is to go, so you guys know us for product A. Do you know we also do B and C? Because nine times out of 10, if you're providing product A, people also want product B, C and D from you. Yeah. Yeah, so that that's a good that's a good uh, good th thought of um, of how to get across your services, and you've got to think about it in different ways all the time. You don't yeah. just have to do it in like a why don't you buy this type scenario. It is about providing that story and that background about why this is useful to somebody, and yeah. you know why you should even think about think about buying it. Going to the back a bit about the dogs, uh, you know, that's okay to post a picture of your dog if it's for a reason, right? Yeah, if so we... Introduce you if it's to say, this is me, this is what I do, this is this is my office buddy, this is whatever, yeah. and, and to get engagement, but not just for the sake of it. Yeah, so we once uh, had someone come to me for training. Yeah. And they said, so this is my Facebook and Instagram account. I was like, that's a really cute dog. She went, yeah, it's not my dog, it's a stock dog. I was like, what? He was like, well, I went to this training course and someone told me to just keep posting pictures of dogs. So I did. I was like, right. Why? She went, well, because I get good engagement. I'm like, yeah, you get great engagement, but you're a property. Like you, you rent property. It's like, you've not mentioned a property anywhere. And this is a fake dog. I was like, what do you have? She went, I've got a cat called Doris. I'm like, and share pictures of the cat called Doris because then as well like you can be working from home and you're like oh my office buddies come in for the day and you can be like this this property gets Doris's approval you know you can turn it into an element of your marketing yeah. don't just post, please please only share a picture of a dog or a puppy if you've got a dog or a puppy <laughs> so um, my old my old boss at Creative Equine actually they've got their equine marketing agency they've got loads of dogs so they're always sharing pictures of their dogs and that's perfect and it meets perfectly with their brand equestrian and dogs go like this yeah exactly so it's perfect but if we started going here's our office dog and it was a stock picture no one no one would buy into it it's not us it doesn't fit our brand it doesn't add any value it doesn't make any sense yeah so always think about the big picture behind it if you genuinely have a cute office dog that makes sense if you don't don't do it yeah find something else that's cute or find something else that's relevant yeah. maybe you maybe you um you're all coffee addicts do a, yeah. do a rundown of wh whose coffee order it is and you know you can get engagement in all sorts of ways can't you a by being sort of like uh um oh, what's the word i'm looking for oh my god uh, transparent, talking about yeah. things that are going on in your office, but also asking questions and, and yeah. putting it back because people like nothing more than talking about themselves, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so and, um, you, you know, so it's ask questions of your audience, and and you don't have to be um, you you do have to um, ask for the sale every you know you do have to do yeah. those posts, but that shouldn't be the sole focus of your of your Facebook marketing strategy. Yeah, that's it. And the other thing is as well that people forget is people buy from people. Yeah. So especially, again, if you're a B2B business and you're offering a service, like don't be afraid to just do live and give away information. People are so scared about giving away information. Yeah. Like, if you're good at your job, tell people that. Yeah. You know, just because you say to someone, by the way, this is how you use a hashtag, they're, they're still going to need your help and your advice and your guidance. They're new at this. Like, don't be afraid to give something away. Yeah, because that comes back to your previous point that although you're a social media agency, what you're actually selling is not how to use a hashtag correctly. You're actually selling, we can save you time so you can actually focus on the actual selling part of your business and the delivery part of your business. And I think that's such an important point to remember that people just kind of uh they just think they've got to focus on the actual 
thing and not yeah. the end result. I talk to clients all the time about the before and after state. What are they like before? They use your product and service and what does their life look now? How do they yeah. feel about it? Are they less stressed? Are they, have they got more time? Can they spend more time with their family? And I know it sounds a bit ridiculous, but you know, even if we take it back to that razor example, right? I, I had been seeing their ads and I was so frustrated with the cheap, crappy razors that I bought from Superdrug. Sorry, yeah. to call out Superdrug. It wasn't probably their brand, but they were rubbish. And I was just getting so frustrated. So when I got a message saying, you know, save time, because ultimately it is, yeah. you know, and all of that, I was like smoother, you know, and the less yeah. plastic and the different way, you know, the way that they were talking yeah. about it in terms of waste and all of yeah. those things. It's like, I'm up for that. I'm going to do yeah. that. And they know their market perfectly, you know, because they aren't cheap. You know, they're not as cheap as your pound for like 20 disposable. Well, yeah, that was a mistake I made. <laughs> yeah. But that's it. They're, they've spoken about the environment issue. They've spoken about the give you a free trial. They'll let you name and engrave your razor. So it's like mine's called Edward because of Edward Scissorhands. It's like it's all those little things. They really thought about this and they're not for everyone and they know that and they're fine yeah so it's not like and they position themselves very differently to dollar shave club who are these razors are a dollar and you won't forget them ever again simply yeah. they yeah. position themselves in a different way because they know exactly who they're talking to and that's another big thing where people mess up on social it's like and in marketing in general you go who are your customer and they go everyone, everyone. <laughs> you are not selling oxygen everyone is not your customer i know yeah, I, I totally agree. In fact, I had a conversation with someone yesterday, um, kind of an introductory call. Um, they wanted some help on some marketing strategy. And it, that, I don't think they were, they, well, I know they weren't clear on who their customer was. Um, because when I asked them, they couldn't articulate it. Um, it was just businesses that need help with X. Um, yeah. Well, that doesn't, that's not really defining who your customer is because you need to get to the individual because, and I think that's the other important thing. I know you said people by people, but I think even in a B2B environment, you've got to remember that there's still a person at the end of the keyboard or by the monitor who's pressing the button to buy, to sign, to yeah. say yes. And you've got to appeal to that person. You almost have to be a bit of a psychologist. Uh, no, yeah. The psychologist yeah. um in in these situations to appeal to that kind of like head and heart type scenario yeah. and that's why i think the best stuff that you see on, on facebook and I, and I look at it a lot i um i really sort of study when i see ads or i see posts that are getting good engagement good social proof on them i'm looking at them now why is that what what have they done is it the image is it the copy how are they addressing their market? And there's all sorts of things that come into it, obviously. But yeah. I think it's just, yeah, let's add value. Let's not just be sort of like generic in how we're um, writing things, but really appeal to the person that you're that you're writing to. And I always think yeah. having one person in mind is a really a specific person yeah. in mind when you're yeah. when you're writing your copy for your ad. Do you and you do should, that? You're, yeah, because you're talking to one person. So yes, you're talking to a hundred thousand people at once, but actually, you're talking to one person on their phone. Yeah, it's always a one-to-one -one conversation. Marketing should always be a one-to-one -one conversation, just amplified. So yeah. you always say you. You always talk to them directly. Always, you always change your copy and your content to reflect them because you target your different customers in different ways. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Are there any other things that you see um, mistakes being made? Um, can you think of anything else right now? We've covered quite a lot already. Um... So a big, it's, it's, it's just more of a pet peeve. I can't stand seeing hashtags on Facebook. And another, another thing that I really hate is when someone goes, well, my Instagram's doing amazing, but my Facebook's really struggling. It's like, well, what are you doing different? It's same content, both platform. You have a different audience on Facebook. You have yeah. a different audience on every social media network. So you should speak to them all differently. You should care enough about your different audiences to create content for them. Yeah, I mean, that's the cross-posting, I think, issue yeah. a lot of the time that, you know, Facebook actively encourage you to, do you yeah. want to cross-post this to Instagram? Do you want to cross-post this to Instagram? I, I, I don't do that. 
at all um, ever and I don't I don't recommend now that's not to say that you can't be talking about the same type of content it's the same yeah. thing that you're saying you just have to tweak it you just have to um, make it relevant so if you're trying to um, if you're trying to um, uh, do something on Twitter the way that you would present that well a you've got a limited number of uh, of characters but the way you would present that is so totally different to how you're doing on facebook so i don't understand why people don't see that difference between instagram and facebook either because they yeah. are different platforms but i think the danger is that they've all got sort of like people see them as the same thing sometimes. yeah yeah that's it yeah um okay so cross posting although i thought i read somewhere that they were going to start introducing hashtags to Facebook. So they did it years ago as well, didn't they? But it just didn't work. Yeah. So years ago they put them on, but this this is the other thing as well, people don't realize, it's actually the technology on Facebook, you don't need hashtags. No. And people don't use that platform that way. No, so. they don't, because you don't search on a, on a hashtag. I tell you no. what, what I, what I, um, what I, what I love about Facebook, actually, is if you're researching something, so say you've got a new, you, you're just, you, you're in the market to buy something. I've been in the market to buy a wetsuit for swimming. Yeah, of course. And uh, so I, I was like, well, where do I even start? What's the best brands? So I go to Google, you know, look at the first one that comes along, go to yeah. their site, lo and behold, Back in Facebook, I am bombarded with all the options. It's so time saving. I don't yeah. need to go now look at them all because they're yeah. presenting to me. This is all the competition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's it. And it's really interesting as well. So I love doing that. So I now, um, so in my head, I'm a pro surfer, not a pro surfer. I sup, I sea swim, but I like to wear all the surf gear. Um, so like I saw a, a skirt on Roxy the other day and all of a sudden I've got Roxy, DC, Billabong. They're all sending me offers. They're all sending me voucher codes. And then as well, they're sending me to like this third party seller that has them all. They'll offer me this money off, this money for that. I'm like, perfect. And it was the same when I was buying a new wetsuit. I've just bought my second paddleboard and I've got all of the paddleboard options put out in front of me. I've got all the social proof I need. So people are telling me if they're good or if they're bad. It's perfect. It saves me hours of time. I love retargeting adverts. And I, I always get really excited when I see an advert that I think is organic content. Because I'm like, yes, that marketeer did a good job there. Yeah. And that's what it is as well. So people, especially with advertising, and, and when people say, oh, I'm spending loads of money. It's like, yes, but who are you targeting? They go, got a really niche audience. Got 8 million people. But 8 million people? They're like, yeah, yeah, 8 million people. I'm like, do you think you have 8 million potential customers for your exceptionally niche products that you've told me there's only about 10,000 people in the UK who could want it? They're like, oh, like, actually, don't be afraid to run niche adverts. Don't be afraid to really pinpoint target because that's what's going to get you the return. And yeah. it's going to work out much more cost effective in the long run. So, so I, I very much performance advertise. So I go and find those really niche audiences saves us a fortune yeah. really good results to the client really beautifully curated bespoke content people don't even realize they're being advertised to yes exactly way to do it. yeah exactly and i think that i mean definitely we're seeing a trend towards that now and and you and you know we're probably more um <clears throat> attuned to it because we look at it every day but um, you are totally right that, I mean, the best ads are those that don't have a stock, photo, stock photo, that have a natural photo that could be a selfie, that could be one you've yeah. taken yourself because you stop and look at it. Um, yeah. I actually um, saw a guy uh, talking about Facebook ads the other day and he said he puts um, all his photos in black and white. He only uses black and white photos because it looks yeah. much more natural and he does them as if, the, and, you know, he does them as if they're ones that he's taken yeah. himself. And I think that's yeah. a really good point that people think that they've got to have all of this sort of like very professional looking yeah. super stock photography. Yes, you have to have a photo that's relevant to the caption and what you're talking about, but yeah. really think about if you would put that in a post, would that work in an ad? And that's yeah. the type of way that you're going to really get some really good metrics out of, um, 
out of Facebook ads, isn't it? Because yeah. I think, um, and, and kind of we can finish off to, by talking about this, I think people need to be aware that, yes, there are ways to get great results from organic content if you think about the ways that we've talked about in terms of value add and making it about the customer and be entertaining, but you can't just expect it for free. And so you have to do a mix between organic and paid. And the way to get the real benefit out of Facebook and Instagram is to do a combination because you, yeah. you know, there's a reason why Mark Zuckerberg is a billionaire, right? Or multi-billionaire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you can do highly targeted and you don't have to, you don't have to waste money. But I think it's a misnomer that people have got that it's free to promote your yeah. business. It, I it think... Is- No, if you're happy to have a really long sales funnel, if you're happy to take your time with it, then stick with organic. If you want quick return, you have to put in advertising. You have to. And what the other thing is people think that they've got to have huge budgets. They don't. So we've got some amazing case studies that we were running at £20 a week to start with. That was it. And we went, you know what? What we'll do is we'll create this. We'll test it. And if it works, we'll keep going. Yeah. And that's all you need to do. But the one thing I stress to everyone before they go into adverts, don't hit the boost post button. Oh, do yeah. it in ads manager and invest in training. Like if you don't have the, if you can't outsource it, invest in training. Like with the Shuman's business campaign, we offer free training. Like yeah. just invest in your time for a few hours and learn to do it correctly because then you will see results. Yeah, I, so, that is my number one top tip. Never hit the boost button. Ever, yeah. ever, ever. <laughs> no, no, never, ever hit the boost post button. And always just invest and spend some time. And spend some time figuring out who your customer really is because it's not everyone. And um, it's another thing I say that you can do really well on social is you can ask them. You can have a conversation with them and go, guys, what do you want from us? What would help? Everyone is so scared to talk to their customers. I know why, because they might say bad things. It's very scary. But if they're your existing customer, they're going to say good things and they're going to want you to do well. So they're going to want to have a conversation with you. Yeah. So yeah. talk to them and ask them. Be like, what do you want? What makes this? Tell us about you. If you're going to ask for loads of information, do it tactfully. We've seen it before, uh, a really well-known, beautifully established artisan brand put out a questionnaire that was like, we want to know stuff about you. And it asked for income. It asked for so much stuff. Yeah. And actually, way off tone, way off brand. Actually, what they should have done is gone, hi, guys, we want to do a little bit more. So actually, we could do is just knowing a bit more information. If you can tell us some stuff about you, that would be great. And you know what? To say thank you, we'll give you a discount code or we'll give you some free product. But like, again, if you are a well-established small brand who's looking for growth, you need to be transparent with your existing people. And if you're going to ask people what they earn, don't ask for an exact figure. Be like, can we have a job title or some more information that you can figure it out from? Like, don't have a high-end product and then go tell us how much money you've got. Like, be tactful with it. Think of it as you are having a one-to-one conversation. So if you were talking to your customer... Because you wouldn't just come out yeah. and say to someone, well, how much do you earn? If you, you know, if you, yeah. would you? I mean, yeah. yeah, exactly. If it feels wrong in a one-to-one conversation, it's going to be wrong on social. Yeah, that's it as well. And think of it and treat social as a one-to-one face-to-face conversation because yeah. that's what it is. Perfect. Well, that's a great place to end then. Yeah. <laughs> Super. Well, thank you so much. I mean, we could probably talk about it for hours, but as we discussed before we came live, I'm starving and you're going to McDonald's. So. <laughs> yep, I'm a classy lady. <laughs> um, but that, to anyone listening, that's because we've both been in the sea of various forms this morning and we're discussing mm-hmm. that it makes you incredibly hungry. It's just, I don't know why that is. I think it's because you're using all the muscles in your body or something. I don't yeah, know. I, what it is, I think but. it's the salt water as well, I think. I think there's something to do with that. So I was a bit worried about going in the sea this morning because I'd read on the, the local kind of like outdoor swimming Facebook group that Southern Water had pumped a load of sewage into the water oh. the bay round from me this morning. And I was a bit like yeah. for an hour yesterday apparently at a fault. And yeah. um, I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to go in today um so I didn't do as much but it because it, it does put you off a bit doesn't it but you've probably got all lovely blue bl- blue flag beaches where you are aren't you so we're very spoiled for beaches I yeah. mean I 
yeah we can go from anywhere this is the thing we've got so many so we do have that problem down here as well right. um but my office is next to a river <laughs> so that you leaves tell that me that you've got a at your office you've got a uh a, a slipway a slipway yeah yeah so I launch my paddleboard from work if I can't hit the beaches Oh, there you go. So, yeah, we're, we're a little bit spoiled down work-life here. Work-life balance, okay. people. Work-life balance. Yeah, that's it. Very important. <laughs> that's another topic of which we've talked at <laughs> Um, All right. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you so much. Um, enjoy McDonald's. And, uh, thank, you. thank you for having me. All right. And, yeah, see you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.